So here's part two of how I am going to deal with the backlash on the cross slide. Um, so I started with dealing with the backlash on this cross slide here because uh, it's a smaller cross slide, a little bit simpler and cheaper to actually experiment with. So I bought uh, some lead screw rod. Uh, this one actually was a complete rod so I cut it in two. And um, one of the things I did was just to cut the lead screw, put it into the lathe here and then just add two screws. So that was one version. The other version is to recreate this lead screw, which I've, uh, I've done there. The only thing I had to do was to incorporate this brass nut, which comes with the lead screw. So I had to make the metal part for the lead screw nut to screw into, and I've covered that. But also one of the other experiments uh, that I've been trying is uh, what I've called my Frankenstein lead screw nut. So I've made a lead screw nut. So I'm going to show you how I went from this to this to eliminate the backlash on the cross slide. So my lead screw nut has got a lot of play in it and that's because it's over 80 years old. And because of the unique size of the lead screw itself, it's very difficult to get a replacement. So I'm going to try an experiment and uh, basically what I'm going to do is sandwich a number of pieces of uh, metal and uh, place them in line across here to create my own lead screw nut. So the way I'm going to do that is uh, drill some holes in here which are the same diameter as the thread here. Once I've done that I'll cut them one side and then I'll open them up so that they fit onto the lead screw itself and I'll show you what I mean now. So here's the little squares neatly cut. I've cut into the inner circle at this point here and it's already uh, twisted so what I intend to do is twist it to the amount that will match the thread. So let's see how that goes. Okay. So that matches the thread all the way around. And now what I'll do is place the next one, sandwich it against that. Now the metal's got uh, the ability to flex. So that one's married up quite nicely, look. And the two of them will turn easily together. Let's put the next one on. And as you can see, as you can see here, they're lining up quite nicely. Now, all together, they will move in unison 
think what I'm going to do, take them all off, flatten them completely because these curves are just binding a little bit. So the next stage is to put a blob of weld so that I keep each one of these sandwiched pieces of metal in place and I'll do that on all four sides. Now the issue that I'm trying to avoid is putting too much heat into this which will heat the bar up which will potentially damage the integrity of the bar so the precaution I'm taking is that I'll use the very end of the bar now this end of the bar will never engage with the lead screw itself. The lead screw only comes to about here. So the other part, other precaution I'm going to make is to cover every part of the lead screw with a fireproof blanket so that will protect it from any splatter. So that's all four sides welded, it's moving nice and freely and there's not too much heat in there and there's no splatter on the thread or the rest of the lead screw itself. So that's where I am with it so far, it's just tacked in place and inside got some nice thread in there. So the next part is to just weld it completely in a solid square and then grind it into the correct size so that I can bolt it onto the original lead screw. So I'll get on with that. I've hit a snag with my first plan and um, inside the thread here where I welded the weld has seeped through and it's interfered with the thread and uh, so the problem is that I tried to encapsulate all four pieces of metal uh, by welding along here and where it's so thin here basically the weld just seeps into the thread uh, so that's no good so the next plan is to do the same again, but I'm just going to weld it on the corners and avoid the part where the edges are very thin. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So I've cut out the four pieces that are going to make up the thread. And uh, I've just nipped the corner off of three of them. And I've left the corner on the fourth. So when I sandwich them together, I can use this as the guideline for where the weld has got to go. So I'll weld it together and I'll show, show you how I'm getting on afterwards. Here's the finished piece. Uh, it's just the right size. Smoothing smoothly. I've left it a little bit tight because I know with the wear it's going to be much easier to move. Right, the next thing to do is to drill four holes and then attach it to the lead screw. I've drilled the holes in the fabricated lead screw nut. I put it all on the lead screw, married up together. I've marked one hole, just about to drill that hole, then I'll tap it. I'll make the hole in this one slightly bigger so that the bolt passes through it cleanly. I'll put it all back together again, mark the other three holes on the brass lead screw nut and then I'll be able to drill them accurately. 
So I'll get on with that and show you how it turns out when I've finished. So here's the completed job. So now I've got four bolts holding the new lead screwed nut and there's no movement at all and it still moves very smoothly. So now I'm going to put it together and see if I've eliminated most of the backlash that I was experiencing on this cross slide. So I had a message from somebody who said that if I put a nut on the end of the cross slide nut, the existing cross slide nut, it would affect the travel of the cross slide. But the actual original cross slide nut will come to about here. And then the additional nut that I created will come to about there. So the rear end of the cross slide is going to engage with this before it comes anywhere near the cross slide nut assembly as it's now been created, which is about that long. And as you can see, I can bring the cross slide to the extent of its design travel without any problem at all. Okay, so here's a moment of truth. Now I could move the handle almost a whole turn before the cross slide started moving. And now... Wow, that's such a smooth action. So it's very similar to the lathes that I used at college when I did my metal machining course. So those lathes are obviously top of the range, really good. And this one is probably about 80, over 80 years old. It dates from 1941, so that makes it 84, 83 years old. Anyway, I'm really pleased with how that has turned out. And that action is so smooth, I can't believe it. Well, thanks for watching.